Everyone, uh, my dear colleagues, my dear friends here in the Senate, dala ko na yung request na yung guidelines and rules of that will be published for the Select Oversight Committee on Intelligence and Confidential Funds Programs and Activities. So allow me to read the statement first. Um, earlier today, we convened for the first time the Select Oversight Committee hearing on the Confidential Intelligence Funds Programs and Activities. I attended the meeting with the members, namely Majority Leader Senator Joel Villanueva, of course Chairman of the Committee on Finance, Senator Sani Angara, Senator Bato de la Rosa, and Minority Leader Coco Pimentel. Senator Viso Antiveros and Senator Rafi Tulfo also attended the meeting after we gave an open invitation to the senators yesterday. This was mainly an organizational meeting to discuss the guidelines that must be followed by committee members with regards to the handling of documents submitted to the committee. This is to prepare us for substantive discussions to come so that we are all on the same page as to the proper handling of information that we'll be reviewing given the confidential nature of these funds. We discuss the rules that will be adopted by the committee and after discussion and revisions, all members agreed to adopt them. Under our rules, all meetings of the committee will be held in the executive session. The rules were crafted to specifically deal with the confidential nature of the funds, but we assure everyone that the majority and the minority are working hand in hand to ensure that these funds have been put to proper use. And this will also be used as a guide for us. Kung kailangan ba natin tanggalin, bawasan, wag bigyan, or dagdagan ito mga ahensya ng gobyerno Pagkatapos po natin makita at uh, mapag-aralan ng mabuti ang paggamit nila in the previous years of their intelligence and confidential funds. So I'm open to questions, gentlemen. Sir, kasama ba sila pag-usapan ng rules? Well, they're using, uh, they are using a, a COA uh, JMC, it's a memorandum circular that they're quoting that was uh, adopted uh, almost a decade ago, uh, which allowed certain agencies, including the COA, by the way, to have intelligence funds. So uh, um, we're also looking into reviewing that. That was part of the discussions today. Uh, we'll be reviewing that, that can that be used without a uh, enabling law uh, to that effect. No? Um, and so we're also going to review that. Me, yes. Is that to make the rules or guidance stricter regarding the use of that? Uh, no, in, yung, yung rules namin dito is only for rules for the committee. Uh, rules lang ito ng ating committee na paano i-handle yung mga documents, uh, paano namin kayo kausapin Anong pwede ba namin sabihin at anong pwede namin dapat hindi sabihin? Pwede, so, ito po yan. Yeah, the uh, kasi ang mangyayari dyan, for example, uh, kanina we reviewed the Office of the President and when we reviewed the Office of the President, most of it, I'm, I'm only I'm allowed to say a few things, but most of what we saw were actually in aid of uh, um, anti-drugs, uh, anti-human trafficking, uh, yung anti-terrorism, uh, dealing with tipsters, yung nagbibigay po ng tip, tapos uh, in four months at uh, meron pong corresponding parang reward. Uh, things like that, which I think is very important. Kailangan natin gawin yun at the very successful as their report is very thorough in the office of the president. What will serve us we haven't discussed. Today was only an organizational meeting. We're going to have a secondary, second uh, meeting uh, with uh, particular agencies that will be called on their executive session to explain. If we hindi namin naintindihan yung pindadala nilang uh, uh, CF and IF, Confidential Funds and Intelligence Funds documents, kasi medyo vague ang ibang items, uh, the committee has the power to invite uh, these uh, Agencies to explain to us further in executive session. There are other agencies that may CIF have submitted a report. So far, yes. So far. 
so far, ang, sa, sa tinignan lang namin today, dalawa lang yung namin today, so far, yes. So, yung iba, hindi pa. Hindi pa namin na nakikita yung sa iba. Yes. I can't discuss, I can't discuss, guys, I can't discuss uh, uh, those details. Or else I will be, I, as here, under rule, under section, uh, <laughs> under section 9, duty to protect confidential information, depending on the extent of violation of conduct of executive sessions, punishment could be by suspension or expulsion based on the Senate rules. So, I'm not allowed to discuss and divulge without the permission of the agency. Because when they come, when it comes to you, when the documents come to you, my dear colleagues and my friends here, it's under the definition of um, anian, classification of confidential information. The most uh, secretive, which is called top secret, yan yung pula, no? Kung top secret yan. If unauthorized disclosure could cause exceptional, exceptionally grave damage to national security, yan yung pinaka highest alert na top secret. Then there is letter B, secret, which is also another red document. If unauthorized disclosure would endanger national security, cause serious injury to the interests or prestige of the nation, or any governmental activity that would be of great advantage to a foreign nation. And then the next in line is confidential. Uh, confidential uh, yung classification of confidential, which is a blue or purple document. It's uh, less, of course, in the line of top secret, secret and confidential. Yes, please, uh, tuloy ko na na si Mian. Yes, yes. Yes. But I cannot disclose to you Further than that, on or, under operational details. Hindi, pag discuss well, katulad yan, uh, meron kaming listahan itong taon ng mga eh, ahensya ng gobyerno may confidential intelligence funds. We're going to come up with a report. We will have to review it all. Then we'll have to come up with a report. Tama ba pang gastos nila dito? Uh, Dapat ba tanggalin dito sa kanila? Bawasan? Or kailangan ba dagdagan? For example, sa DOTR, kawawa-kawawa yung Coast Guard. Imagine the Coast Guard only has 10 million in intelligence funds and they're in the forefront in the West Philippine Sea issue. So dapat siguro dagdagan. Talagang lahat kami in, in unison, we are united that we are going to increase the budget of the Coast Guard. Pero siyempre, tap-tap yasin yan sa ibang budget. So we may get it from another agency that we feel does not necessarily need the funds. And we can move it to agencies like the Coast Guard, the Navy, uh, uh, maybe police intelligence uh, units, uh, uh, NICA, NSA. Tagdagan po natin sila. Yung mga kailangan talaga ng intelligence funds. Sir, paano yun? Halimbawa, uh, without uh, disclosing yung mga specific details, kung meron kayong agency na hindi Yes. It will become a recommendation under the budget. So part of the amendments to the budget, nandiyan na yan. Mawawala na sila. We will remove this particular item or lessen their budget on confidential funds and we may increase, uh, move it to another agency. Yes. It, that will be done. Actually, out of transparency, that will be done. But that will be done during the period of amendments already during the... Uh, uh, Plenary. Yes. Yes. Wala pa. Wala pa. Because uh, after that, we we decided to discuss already the budget of the NICA and the NSA. So, in the National Coordinating Council, nandun na sila sa taas. So, after our meeting, we had two hours to discuss the rules and basically to study only two agencies so far. Out of, ang dami ha. Ang dami, mga more than 20, I think. It's like about 27 or 28 agencies. The listing is not with us now, I can see, but there's a lot. Yes, there's a request from civilian agencies for confidential funds. Is it contradictory to the security sector that we have the insurgency problem? Well, some are not just insurgency function. There's one there that uh, 
nasilipan ko, hindi ko nababanggitin para hindi ko violate yung executive session rules. Uh, may isang agency na ginamitan niyan for removal of informal settlers from their area, giving them assistance and uh, relocation sites. So, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't exactly have to be, uh, I guess, uh, terrorism in nature or national security in nature. Yan ang paggamit nila. Yan ang paggamit nila. Now, it is up to us to decide in the committee kung tama ba yung paggamit nila noon. Di ba? So, so that, that's up for us now to decide on kung tama ba paggamit nila doon. Uh, and it looks like uh, the mood of the committee was to remove the intelligence funds being requested by that agency for next year. Yes. May guidelines galing sa COA yan. May guidelines. At napakaigpit ng reportorial nila sa COA. Uh, they have the guidelines. I do not have the guidelines with me today. Uh, I wish I, maybe my office could furnish you the guidelines from COA on how uh, they will um, report or how they will account for their uh, confidential and intelligence funds. There is a menu. There's, under the guidelines, there is a menu. Napakahigpit nga bago ma-release yung bondo na yan eh. So, tingnan natin yung paano paggamit. Pero si Ika, tsaka sa intelligence, well, it's executive session. Pero nasabi nila po na wala nagkagal nyo ng budget. Hindi na lang po yung pwedeng safe lang po. Anong reason magpadadal nagkagal ng budget yung... Well, uh, because we feel that uh, these are interesting times and I think uh, we need to uh, give budgets to the NICA and to the uh, NSA, National Security Advisor, in terms of, for example, cybersecurity. The Philippines is very vulnerable to cyber hacks and cyber attacks. Wala tayong cybersecurity backbone. Um, as a matter of fact, it is only being discussed now in this administration under the DICT, under the instructions of the President. So our Armed Forces is already setting up their cybersecurity divisions. Walang pondo mga yun, kasi bago lang. So they're requesting it from us now in this uh, budget. So we are inclined, of course, to support them. So the budgets na makatatapyasan, baka doon namin ilalagay for the creation of the cybersecurity divisions. Ano po yung target na bawasan para maidagdag sa LSE, Nika, and other internet Ano ang? Ano ang ano timeline? Bawasan. Ah! We have we have not reached that part yet. We have not reached. Hindi pa kami nag-usap ng on particular agencies. General lang kami. Yeah, general lang kami. General strokes. We give general strokes. This is what we should do as a committee. This is how we should report it out to the people. This is how we should uh, uh, be able to uh, come up with transparency when it comes to these issues. But at at of course without violating the confidentiality rules. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, of course, part of the briefing was the West Philippine Sea. Hindi naman. Kasi yung, well, uh, um, banat ng tao namin sa atin na yun, sa gobyerno, yung complaints at of course yung uh, comments ng napakaraming tao, bakit naman na uh, napakalit ng intelligence funds nga ng uh, itong intelligence agencies and nadagdagan pa yung mga civilian agencies na hindi naman tama. So, we're doing, that's part of the review that we'll be doing. Can you suggest that Actually, you know, the Select Oversight Committee, we opened it up to our, of course, there are five members, but we'll open it up to the, our colleagues. So, I would suggest Senator Cheese attend the next one and uh, so that he can also look and review the documents. Hindi kasi namin pwedeng i-reproduce eh. We're gonna follow this very strict guideline wherein uh, my office will hold all the documents. Pag magkaroon kami ng select oversight committee, ilalatag namin sa lamesa. They cannot take pictures. They can only review. They cannot take home the documents. And then it's brought back into a sealed box. So it's all there for confidentiality. Sir, under the rules, kailan dapat magsasubmit yung mga agencies ng report nila on, this, uh, on how they spend? Over? Before the budgets are submitted to us. Usually once a year. And the periodic, yeah. for example, quarterly. Once a year lang eh. Once, uh, well, our requests, we can do it quarterly, but it's a... Uh, a quarterly ba? Oh, quarterly. But the ones that they submitted to us came one pack for one year. Sir, last year. Did you do the same uh, for the 20, 20 crews? 
No, because this is, we're actually reviewing the kasama na 2022. Uh, what was submitted to us was 2022 to 2023 confidential intelligence funds. So, Mr. Up, pwede. Posible yan. Malaking yung posibilidad yan. I cannot say which agencies. Marami yan eh. I cannot say. Before? Previous Congresses meron daw. But I don't recall in the last... Meron ba tayong last Congress? Parang last Congress, last majority leader, I don't recall... Yeah, I don't recall approving one. So, yes. The, the, we elected already the committee members uh, before the break, diba? Right? So the committee members are, uh, it's four members of the majority headed by the Senate President and one member of the minority. But we invited Senator Risa. Senator Risa was here yesterday. We're not at liberty to say unless they allow us to say it. Yeah. But most of them are most of them are, of course, part of the program of the NSA and the and the and the um, NICA are both internal and external security threats. But we discussed a lot on the external security threats. Security threats. Yes, uh, Sharia. Oh, sorry. Uh, it is myself, then we included the majority leader, and then the chairman of the Committee on Finance. And we included Senator Bato de la Rosa because he's being a former PNP official. He knows how intelligence and confidential funds are supposed to be used or how it is misused. So he gave us very good inputs, Karina, uh, during the discussion. And the minority leader, uh, member from the minority, we chose the minority leader, Senator Coco Pimentel. Yes. Only for the agencies that have confidential intelligence funds. Yes. Both, even military agencies, if you can ask them to come and explain if they need uh, to augment or, or we see that they're not utilizing it effectively. Sir, you review CIF plenary the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Hopefully, tapos na kami by hopefully tapos na kami by mid November. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, from, uh, the documents, kung kasi may mga uh, uh, nag-submit ng items na pagkabig. Eh. Is simula po ba sa discussion that, that there should be a ceiling? For example, yung sa OBP kasi yung 500 million na confidential fund. That's almost 20% of what uh, they're... We, we have not discussed on ceilings yet. We are only discussing the utilization of the funds. If it was proper or or not. Ongoing pa. We, our session will start at 3.30. Oh, wala pa. Hindi pa kami tapos sa review. Hindi pa. Sinilip lang namin. So we're still reviewing it. Oh. Possibly next week. We'll possibly have next. Uh, come next week. 2022 to 2023. Yeah. Yes. 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 I, um, we have just sinilip lang namin. Di pa namin. I can't give you a proper assessment. Because may mga titles yun eh. Tatanungin pa natin. Maybe we'll invite the the one in charge. Uh, not necessarily the vice president, but we can invite the undersecretaries to explain what these programs were. Mm -hmm. And how the money was used for these programs. So, meron din pa kayong concern dun sa money ng transfer? Like, it was from the contingent fund of Ibang issue yun, but uh, ibang issue pa yun. That's another issue altogether. Uh -huh. It's nothing. Matatakal din yun sa committee. Yes. So, sir, say to say that yung hinihig 22 months, I'm sorry, hinihig 115 and then the 500 of OPP, hindi pa siya talaga assured. Yeah, it's all being reviewed. 
all of their CF and intelligence funds, not only just of the OVP, but everyone else is being reviewed. Maybe there's parliamentary courtesy sa Office of the President because uh, maganda, in, in fairness to the Office of the President, napaka-detalyado ng kanilang report. Very detailed. Very detailed. Uh, no comment muna ako. No comment. In the other, other file, with the other agencies, no comment. Ah, itong tinatakal natin for you committee report? Very important. Very important. We should consider that as economic sabotage. Absolutely. Because it's price manipulation and it will cause price manipulations. Uh, the farmers have, uh, will be unduly disadvantaged and, uh, and uh, the people will, will have a difficult time. We'll have a very, very difficult time. Lalo na uh, uh, Ati mga magsasaka. Number one, first and foremost, ati magsasaka. Not to mention the case of biosecurity. Ang dami ng mga sakit. Yung mga kokolisap, yung ASF, galing sa smuggled, ano yun, agric products. Um, remember, I'll give you an example. There was a ban uh, about six years ago, or maybe eight years ago, on pork products coming from ASF products. Uh, Identified countries. That's the African swine fever. Ano nangyari? Nakalusot yung mga delata, nakalusot yung mga daladala po sa airports, nakalusot. Uh, kinain ng tao, tinapon yung uh, tira, ginawang kanin baboy, pinakain sa mga baboy, yun, boom. Natumahan tayo ng ASF. What happened preceding years? Uh, millions of hogs, thousands of lives ruined because of uh, lack of biosecurity. So, yeah, that, that's very important. And that's smuggling. So, if we strengthen uh, the anti-smuggling efforts of government, that is also biosecurity for our country. Sir, mga katulog ko siya. Yes. Susubukan namin um, ipasa uh, before the break, kung hindi kaya before the break, by Christmas. Susubukan natin. Definitely, uh, it will be able to help. But at this point, at uh, this point in time, because yung yung uh, kailangan natin tutukan jan sa rice crisis is the hoarding. It's the hoarding and the lack of uh, support given to our farmers. Ano yun eh? Uh, one, two, three punch yun eh. Kung combination ng problema, combination of punches ang nararamdaman ng rice industry. Unang una yung mga bagyo, pangalawa yung lack of support. Uh, pangatlo yung um, um, uh, hoarding and manipulation of pricing and prices. Ang nagkwento nga sa akin si Secretary Mon Lopez kasama ko kagabi. Ang sabi niya sa akin uh, pag nag-announce daw na may shortage, his experience, ah, I'm quoting sec Secretary Mon Lopez, don't quote me, I'm quoting him, we were right, right beside each other. He's experienced daw. Dapat napaka, nakabantay din yung DTI sa mga merkado. Kasi, ang nangyayari, pag may announcement na may shortage of rice, papalitan nila kaagad yung price. Kung 40 pesos yan, tatanggalin nila, lalagyan nila. 50. Ganun lang. Ganun lang. Oh, isn't that price manipulation? Kasi may announcement lang na may shortage. Ah, makinaabag na kayo dyan. Okay, 50. So, plus 10 pesos yung kanilang uh, gain. Kaya, napakalaga din ang trabaho ng DTI dito. And I think Secretary Pascual should know that. Because uh, when, it goes to the, when it goes from the farm to the market, that's already the, the responsibility of the DTI in price controls and the price monitoring. Kaya sige, nagsasamantala sila. Siyempre, magsasamantala sila. Kawawa po yung ating mga kababayan. So, multiple yan. That's why uh, uh, the problem of rice is uh, a very complex one. But I already proposed solutions. I proposed to the President yung, yung rice production zones natin. Sabi ko nga sa kanya, and I'll just give maybe five minutes of your time. Ang sabi ko nga, proposal ko is, uh, nung araw, nung sa Masagana 99, batang-bata pa ako noon, I was a teenager, I remember in Bukidnon, there used to be those in overalls 
Tapos naka-win overall sila, nakalagay sila ng mas gana 99. May dala silang clipboard, bumibisita sa mga farmers, sinusulat anong problema nyo dito, ano bang kailangan yung input, ano bang kailangan nyo pa ng equipment. Tapos dinideliver. So very grassroots yung program. Ang nangyari kasi na yun, top heavy. So ang, ang uh, order hindi in-implement sa baba. So ang suggestion ko sa presidente, and I mentioned this to him in one, one dinner, and I think they're, they're now formulating the the proposal or the program is identify rice producing zones. So kung sino ba taga Central Luzon dito? Dito sa Central Luzon, it's Bulacan, Pampanga, and Nueva Ecija. Those are the three biggest rice producing zones. So ang suggestion namin is this. Assign an undersecretary or assistant secretary or regional director na nakatutok doon. You call it RPZ1, for example, because it's the closest to Manila. They will now have a database of all the farmers that are there. If it's 25,000 farmers, so be it. Dapat may pangalan sila, may database on every farmer and the size of their hectare and, um, um, uh, of course, uh, the location of where they are planting their rice. After which, tututukan na yan ng USEC. Dapat yung instruction sa kanya, i-memorize yung mga mukha ng lahat ng tao yan. Di ba, ng mga tao mo. Tapos kung anong kailangan nila, kulang sila ng mechanized equipment para palagi kalabaw lang. Bigyan natin ng mechanized equipment. Kulang sila ng bini, bigyan natin ng bini. Kulang sila ng fertilizer, bigyan natin ng fertilizer at pesticide. That way, in 90 days, we can maximize the output. We can even double the output of that rice-producing zone. Because of nakatutok na tayo eh. Then you, do, then you magnify that to the whole country. So the DA now, secretary, undersecretaries, and ASECs will have areas of responsibility. Nakatutok sila dun para may accountability. Pag hindi nila uh, tinaas ang production dyan for whatever reason, tanggal, float. Diba? May accountability sila. So I think that's what the president can do to be able to help the farmers. And I think the farmers will appreciate that. That's another thing. We have to review the rice stratification law. Pangako nila sa amin. Nang economic managers nung nandito po kami, including at that time, Secretary Dar of the DA, that the rice stratification law will solve all our problems like a magic wand. Eh, wala naman po nangyari. Uh, mahal pa rin, nagmahal pa. Sobrang mahal pa ng presyo ng, ng uh, bigas na yun. So, hindi ko maintindihan eh. Uh, ba't nagka-problema ng ganun? So, um, Again, I think uh, it's a good step that the president initially put the rice uh, price ceilings. Um, I know marami nag, nagagalit ng mga retailers, pero katulad ng binagit ko nga kanina, marami nagsasamantala. At uh, marami nagsasamantala mga traders. So, uh, importante dyan, dapat malaman natin yung farm gate prices. Magkaka, I think this month, we're already going to start uh, uh, harvesting. Uh, ang bilhin ng palay dun, palay ha, hindi bigas, ang bilhin ng palay nila dun is at least 20 to 21 pesos. So kung 21 to 21, pe 20 to 21 pesos, after you mill it, it's about 28 pesos. Pinakamataas na yung 30 pesos. So pagdating dito sa merkado, dapat less than 35 pesos yan. So it makes no sense na pagbili mo dun, na 21 pesos yung palay, pagdating dito, 50 pesos yung, pa yung bigas, kalokohan na yun. Talagang there's price manipulation. Sorry, sorry. So yung review, sir, is towards what amendment po, improvement, or review yung implementation, sir, or the law itself? Well, um, I think there should be a hearing called by the Committee on Agriculture and the Committee on, uh, uh, I would say, uh, Trade and Commerce para mapag-usapan natin na maayos ano ba nangyari dito sa rice tarification. No? Gusto ko rin sila. Kahapon, di ba, nagkaroon tayo ng SIM card hearing? Because I asked the NDC and I asked the telco companies, what the hell is happening? Bakit ang dami pa rin scammers? Today, I got one. Bago na naman. Saan na ba yan? May scammer na naman. Nag-text sa akin na uh, ganito, ganyan. Ito, ito. Hindi governor naman to. Ito, good news. Too easy. Switch to NASA 11 to get free 20p, free tickets. What the hell is this? And then the number, of course, it's... I don't know what the number. Gusto ko nga tanungin sila nito eh. Kasi hindi to landline to, hindi to Viber. 
Asin sabi nila, they're blaming Viber, Messenger, and WhatsApp. Kasi nakatap na yung uh, itong mga sindikato dito sa mga OTT ang tinatawag, over-the-top, uh, 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 no, sorry, OTS, over-the-top services. And, um, and they were able to do that prior to the SIM registration uh, uh, effectivity. So we called now um, internet. Internet lang kailangan nila. So kailangan natin palitan yan o baguhin yan o penalize yan. Pangalawa, nag-invite din tayo ng mga Paymaya, Gcash, uh, Pera Padala, Palawan, yung mga M. Lulier, all these uh, padala, uh, um, what you call this, yung money transfers na ginagamitan ng mga sindikato para sa kanilang nefarious activities. So, um, sila din, dapat maging strict to din sila pagdating sa padalang pera at sinong kukuha. Diba? Napakahalaga nun. Kasi for example, may racketeer, humingi ng uh, itong scammer, humingi ng 10,000, pinadala sa Nueva Ecija, yung pera. Yung nagtanggap nun, for example, 7-Eleven or some establishment dyan, M. Lulier or whatever, dapat kunin talaga lahat ng detalye. And you have to... Kasi na yun, pangalan lang, pakita mo lang ID mo, hindi pa nga nila kinikuha yung details ng ID mo, babayaran ka na nila. So na yun, we have to be very strict with that. And maybe it might need an amendment on the SIM card registration law. We may have to strengthen the SIM card registration law. Napakagaling na mga scammers na yun. Ang gagaling nila mag-adapt mag, uh, ng mga panibagong mga rackets for this. Yes, going back to the rice tarification law, we will be doing that. And I think uh, it's about high time now that we uh, do a review of the implementation of that law. So, thank you. I'll leave you the first copy. Do you have copies for the media? Share nyo na lang. Yeah, you sent them an email, yung, ano, yung Viber. Thank you, everyone. Salamat. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you. Ngayon, in-include natin ang hoarding at cartel. Oo, kasi nakita natin na uh, hindi lang smuggling yung hoarding and cartel. Oo. Kasi alam mo, noong 2018, tumaas ang rise from uh, dating 32 to 40 kil ano, uh, per kilo. So, uh, nakita nila na ang presidente ng Pilipinas, pag nagtataas ang rice, nagiging unpopular. So, they panic. So, pinakiusapan nila ako, talaga naman pinramis na natin sa World Bank in 1995 that we will liberalize the importation of rice. World Trade Organization. Kaya lang, the World Trade Organization gave us enough time to make our rice farmers competitive. But after 1995 to 2018, wala pa rin nangyari. Kasi minsan, parang mas tama na mahirapan kayo para gawan nyo ng paraan. Pero pag walang pressure to do it, walang ginagawang project to do it. So pinakiusapan nila ako na ipasa ko yung rice tarification lang. We will liberalize the importation of rice. I agreed. But all the tariff from imported rice will be given back to the small farmers. 
That's why we created the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. Alam mo, yung Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund is based on a study by the Philippine Institute of Development Study. They compared the production costs in Vietnam and the production costs of palay in the Philippines. And in Vietnam, they can produce palay at 6 pesos per kilo. In the Philippines, we produce it at more than 12 pesos per kilo. Tapos tin-raise nila, pinatrace ko sa kanila yung cost difference. Why 6 doon, tayo 12. Na-discover nila na 350 of the 6 pesos is labor. Mas mataas ang labor natin ng 3 per 3 pesos and 50 centavos per kilo. And then, yung 250 is low productivity. During that time, we have only 3.7 metric tons per hectare. Oh, so, yun ang sinold namin when I created the 10 billion rice competitiveness enhancement fund. I gave 5 billion to mechanization para mag-mechanize tayo para bumaba yung labor costs. Oo. Oh, Mm. Cartel and hoarding. Oh, oh, oh. May ano eh, 1 million pesos eh. Oh, yung, yung hinord mo, 1 million pesos ang halaga. Yung maliliit cannot hoard 1 million pesos. Kaya yung malalaki ang tatamaan ito. So as I continue, so nagbigay tayo ng 5 billion pesos for mechanization to lower the cost of palay sa farmer. And then we gave 3 billion pesos every year to distribute inbred seedlings. Uh, ito ay na-discover ng fill rice. Ang pangako ng fill rice dito from 3.7 metric tons per hectare, maitataas nila ang rice production to 6 metric tons per hectare. In, in fact, today, 4.6 na sila. Sabi nila, 2024, magiging 5. And if we renew the rice tarification law, kaya nila ang 6. So, yun. Kasi pag nag-6 metric tons per hectare, galing sa 3.7, that means we increase our production by 62%. Eh, ang shortage lang natin, 15 eh. Oh, so, Ma, mas marami ng rice ang mapoproduce, makaka-export na tayo ng rice after a while. At we can bring down the cost of rice kasi mechanized na tayo at saka mas maraming rice per hectare. Ang aim lang natin, 8 pesos, okay na eh. Kasi ang rice, 8 pesos uh, times 2, uh, yung palay, 8 pesos times 2, 16 pesos. Pag 16 pesos, you can sell at 25 pesos per kilo. No, we're talking of the rice competitiveness enhancement fund. What do you want to discuss? The rice competitiveness enhancement fund or the ano uh, or the so we'll go to smuggling and cartel. Okay. Na walang conviction. Well, today, today, mas hinikpitan natin yung batas. And at the same time, we will create an anti-smuggling and cartel court. Dati kasi, pupunta lang yan sa uh, RTC. Ngayon, pumayag na ang Supreme Court that we will uh, create a court specially for anti-agricultural smuggling and cartel hoarding law. Oo na, parang kasintaas ng sandigan bayan. So, hindi na nila maitatago. Yun lang ang gagawin nila. Pag wala silang na-prosecute, eh, di wala silang performance, miski isa. Kasi ngayon, pag dinala mo sa RTC, katakot-takot ang kaso sa RTC, natatabunan lang. At saka tinanggal na namin ang power to file cases from the Bureau of Customs. Iba ng agency ang magpa-file ng cases, hindi na Bureau of Customs kasi parang tingin ko may conflict of interest. Kasi yung IRR binigay nila sa Bureau of Customs. Eh. Hindi, eh. Uh, Department of Justice, uh, PNP, yung other agencies na nag-enforce. Uh, ano, uh, nag Pero hindi po sila mag-i-require para tapusin yung prosecution period. No, no. Ito kasi, 
economic sabotage na available while the court is going on eh, ano nakakulong siya remember mayayaman to ayaw nito makulong <laughs> habang nagkakaso nakakulong ka kasi non available eh. first level court po yung i-create hindi hindi yung kapantay lang na RTC no no higher parang kapantay ng court of appeals <laughs> Going back to the rice numbers, despite the tariffication law, why is it getting more expensive? Why? There are Nueva Ecija that can produce rice at eight pesos per kilo. Oh, nag nag manifest na sila yung Unigrow, and they can sell at twenty five. Kaya lang katulad nong NFA, they're supposed to buy rice from the farmers. They have a nine billion budget. Binili nila one fourth lang of the budget, but hindi sila bumili ng rice sa farmers. Para marami tayong rice today. Oh. Do you support the plan of the government na mag-allocate ng two billion para daw ayuda doon sa mga rice retailers? Ako okay lang yon. Alam mo naman ako okay lang na tumulong basta sa mahihira. Yung mahihirap, yung maliliit na retailers, hindi yung big retailers. So, Ba, alam mo naman ng small retailers from big retailers. Small and micro. Oh. Maraming ano, nagsasanga ng tindahan din sa palengke dahil hindi nila makakulong sila. Yung uh, walang, walang, walang shortage ng rice. I assure you. Walang shortage ng rice. Nagagawa lang sila ng artificial shortage para maipagbili nila ng mahal. And hindi natin mapigil yon. So ako iniisip ko, how do you stop that? Right? Ano? Price cap, di ba? Oh. Should the government be looking for those individuals na nakikita? Yeah. Yeah. Kadiwa. Yung Unigro nga sa ano sa sa ano Nueva Ecija willing sila magbenta sa Kadiwa 25 hindi sila inaasikaso alam mo ang problema natin yung implementing agency kasabuat din eh anong agency yun anong agency eh hindi ko nasasabihan lahat so kami mga kanina nabanggit Di-reviewin namin. Talaga namang we will review that in 2024. Kasi mag-expire siya ng 2025. So in 2024, we decide if we're going to renew it or to let it expire. From 2018 hanggang early this year, okay. Ngayon lang. Hindi nyo napansin na kaya sila nagaganyan para hindi ma-renew ang rice tarification law. Diba? Eh, di yung nakikinabang ko hindi ma-renew ang rice tarification. No? Kasi dyan, tinanggal ang power ng NFA to import. ba? Diba? In fact, noong time na yon gusto nila tanggalin na NFA. Naawa lang ako sa 4,000 employees ng NFA kung tatanggalin ng NFA. Kasi sila nag import eh, but hindi nila makontrol ang prices. Walang ang rice tarification noon eh. They can import ng walang tariff eh. Oh. Oh. Eh, hindi nila makontrol eh. Nung ipasa namin ang rice tarification, nakontrol eh. O ngayon lang nila ginaganyan niyan kasi i-renew -re eh. Ayaw nilang ma-renew eh. Sino pa sila? Eh, siguro. Wala offense ng Felicity Caso sa kanila for the reason. Kaya nga, we will pass the rice, uh, the anti-agricultural smuggling and cartel hoarding law. Yun, yun ang ano. Sino pong ayaw mag-marino? Eh, siguro, yung mga trader and cartel. Kasi tinanggal ang power sa kanila eh. Ngayon, any, anybody can import provided may ano, may magbabayad ka ng 35% tariff. Tapos yung collection sa tariff will be given back to the small farmers. What's wrong with that? Hindi, natutupad. Maraming may gusto na rin. Paano nakaproduce ng 8 pesos yung taga ano, Nueva Ecija kung hindi kami nagsaksid? Tanungin yung mga small farmers kasi ang nasa dyaryo, mga mayayaman yan. Hindi ka naman makakalabas sa dyaryo kung hindi ka mayaman. Yung mga small farmer ba, makakaya nila maglabas sa dyaryo? Eh, hindi nga niyan alam kung paano pumunta sa dyaryo. Eh. 
ko. Pero tanungin nyo sila sa local. Paano uh, nagmimigay ng 3 billion worth of inbred rice seedlings? Libre. Oo. Tapos, ang maganda dyan sa inbred rice seedlings, it's being done in the Philippines, manufactured in the Philippines by the uh, co-op of rice farmers. So, ibig sabihin, pag tinuruan mo ang rice farmers, in the future, they can produce their own seeds. Di ba yun ang gusto natin? Na yung mga farmer, to empower the farmers to produce their own seeds. At kung maturuan natin silang mag-operate ng machine at saka marunong mag-maintain ng machine, well, bababa ang labor cost. Oo. And magiging competitive tayo sa Vietnam. Vietnam is the most competitive na rice farmers in the world. Oo. Alam mo, I went, I, I, I got this idea when I went to France. And uh, I was invited by the Association of Farm Schools in France. They have thousands of farm schools in France. And it's not an agricultural country. It's a first world country. And then I went to a farm. A 100 hectare wheat farm uh, owned by a farmer. Yun daw pinamana sa kanya ng magulang niya kasi yung dalawa niyang kapatid ay nag-lawyers uh, sa Paris at saka nag-accountant uh, uh, sa Paris. Siya lang ang naiwan sa farm na nag-farming. Uh, Tapos sabi ko, how many employees do you have? Ang sagot niya sa akin, I'm the only one. I'm fully mechanized. 100 hectare. So, <laughs> kaya yun, di ba? So, in the Philippines, wala naman tayong 100 hectare. Ang, ang land reform beneficiaries natin, 2 hectares and below. So, ang gagawin natin, gagawin natin association, tapos ang bibigyan natin ng machine, yung co-op at association, at sila ang magme-mechanize. Then we have economies of scale. Yung rice farmer natin, hindi na ipagbibili ang palay. Binibigyan natin ngayon ng, ano, ng rice meal. Oh, ang dami nang binigyan na rice meal na probinsya, sila na paglabas ng product sa kanila, rice. At yung co-op nila can go direct to the consumer, bebenta na yung rice, hindi na dadaan sa middleman. Kaya ayaw nila niyan eh. Kasi mawawala, mag improve yung ating value chain, mawawala na ang middleman, ang farmer natin, diretso sa consumer. Senator, ma-identify po ba yung Ayoko na. That's not my job. That's the job of the implementing agency. I don't want to comment on that kasi that's not my job anymore. My job as chairman of the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food is to make our rice farmer competitive and all our farmers competitive. And that's my line because I am a business graduate. I know how to make a, camp, uh, a group of people competitive. But I'm not a lawyer. I don't want to interfere in the implementation of the law. Siguro. Yeah, yeah. We hope to pass it before the uh, Congress ends in September 28. One million and above. It, it won't matter if it's below one million. I'm telling you. Based, uh, maliit, hindi naman magmamatter yun. Okay? Okay.